In this video, we will talk about bridges, what they are, and why they might be useful for different Tor users in highly censored regions. Governments and internet providers in countries around the world are extending their repressive practices to the virtual world, and thus block access to the internet and often Tor. That makes it difficult for people who use Tor-powered applications like Tor Browser to connect to the Tor network directly. The good news is that all Tor-powered applications are packed with censorship defense features that help users bypass the blocking of Tor. Let's look at these features inside Tor Browser. If you navigate to Settings and select the Connection option from the sidebar, you'll see a range of options to configure your connection to the Tor network. If you scroll down, you'll spot the Bridges section. For transparency purposes, Tor servers, called Relays, are publicly listed on the Tor Metrics portal. Internet services providers or governments can therefore block direct access to Tor by blocking access to the relay addresses listed on the portal. Bridges are relays that are private and not publicly listed and harder to block. Today, the Tor network counts around 7,000 relays and 2,500 bridges, all run by volunteers. Bridges help you avoid getting noticed by internet sensors by disguising your internet activity. That means to an onlooker, your internet activity will appear as something else, like a video call for instance, and not as though you're connecting through Tor, a bridge to the internet. There are different kinds of bridges. Some come bundled with Tor Browser and help you stay connected to Tor by fooling internet sensors into believing that you're using the internet for something that they don't censor. These kinds of bridges are automated in the browser, which means with a click, you can automatically connect to them. Then there's the case where the built-in bridges won't work because sensors in your country discover them. If that is the case, you can request a bridge address from us by clicking on Request a Bridge. Fill in the characters from the image, and upon pressing Enter, new bridges will be activated. We want to make it as easy as possible. You can also request bridge addresses from our Telegram bot, the Get Bridges bot, and paste them onto Tor Browser when selecting Add a Bridge manually. You can request bridge addresses via email too, which works best from a Gmail or RiseUp address, bridges at torproject.org, and paste them in the same place. Phew, that was a lot. But if there is one thing to take away, remember that bridges help you bypass censorship or access Tor services when they are seemingly blocked in your region. Our team works hard to make sure you can reach the open and unrestricted internet. Now, if you're curious to learn more about what these jargony words mean, OBSF4 and Snowflake, do continue watching this video. If you're done for today, thank you for watching up to this point. Don't hesitate to reach our team if you face any issues. Our contact info is pasted below. All right, so now you know that bridges help you bypass censorship or the blockage of Tor by disguising your internet traffic. But what exactly do we mean by disguising? OBSF4 makes Tor traffic look random. This works in many countries. And Snowflake makes your internet activity appear as though you're using the internet for a regular video or voice call. That's it, not too complicated, right? To recap, if you want to use a Tor-powered application such as Tor Browser and find yourself stuck and unable to connect to the Tor network, it could be because your internet service provider is blocking Tor. If that is the case, or in case you're unsure, we recommend enabling bridges to circumvent this block and access Tor in the internet openly and privately.